mushiness to the statements today that the class, wasn't the, there over the, the weekend. That's the clinical term, of course. Yeah, and we use only scientific words here. Um, there's, a, there's definitely an equivocation that wasn't there Sunday morning when you heard these vibrant denunciations of the idea President Biden should step aside. You have the perhaps top surrogate for President Biden in the U.S. House, Jim Clyburn of South Carolina, the lion of the U.S. House, who was so pivotal in 2020 in getting President Biden the nomination, saying during an interview with one of our competitors that he would, in fact, get behind Kamala Harris if Kamala Harris were to emerge and President Biden were to withdraw. Just putting that out in the universe can be so potent at this moment in time. It just feels like an important 24 hours are ahead for the president and his political future as a nominee. Jim Clyburn has spoken to the president yet since the debate, right? That's right. And I think ultimately a lot of these Democrats who have yet to you know, make their statement, who've kept their powder dry, they want meetings. They want to meet with the president, hear from the president, if not see the president in a vibrant way, publicly putting to rest these concerns. Now that the president is going to be uh, speaking with governors tomorrow, some in person, some virtually, our Nancy Cordes reporting that. Scott, do you get a sense the Democrats are also treading lightly here because while they obviously don't want a firestorm of panic, perhaps going out there and following Representative Doggett's lead would backfire, would have the counter effect and make President Biden even more steadfast in continuing to run? Yeah, I've heard that from a number of congressional sources, Lindsay. We don't want to be Liz Cheney. And to reiterate that point, she was a first Republican to call for Donald Trump's impeachment, and only nine Republican colleagues followed her. She was on an island by herself that ultimately led to her demise in the, in the party. And those other 10 House Republicans who impeached Donald Trump, only two of them are still in well, office. Well, we are talking about two very different parties. Yeah, and I think that's true. And I think th that dynamic is at play right now, too. Um, is there a loyalty oath here? about to find out if Democrats view it as such or if they have a different perspective on things. Scott, I'm sorry I'm peppering you with so many questions, but okay, let's say we fast forward, you know, 10 steps. Who would be behind President Biden? Who would poll as well? Who would have the money cash that you would need? I mean, that has to be also part of the calculus here for Democrats in this moment. Yeah, I'll double down on your caveat that this is presumptive, but according to the sources with whom we're speaking today, this is part of the dynamic at play right now. If you're going to ask for President Biden to withdraw, who do you champion in his place? And if they have to work that out in advance, it's going to buy, it's going to buy some time for everybody involved because they want to come out there with a statement of, if not him, then who? And that's going to take some internal debate, and that's a charitable way of putting it. That could be an all-out political free-for-all. Scott McFarland, we know you'll stay on top of it for us. Thank you.